everyone and welcome to another newscast. My name is Sam Healy and in this video we're going to show you all of the latest news about our projects as well as the company. As always, if you don't want to watch the entire video, you can skip to the parts that interest you by utilizing the timestamps in the description below. For general news today, as usual, I'll be scheduling my two videos today for later this week on Thursday and Friday, so be on the lookout for those and make plans now to be there. We usually have a great time, and more the merrier will certainly be the case. JT and I have finished recording our Level 3 Dungeon Journey against The Prophet, so I'll be working on editing that footage and should have the videos available on Friday and Saturday this week. Now, we don't have any updates for Solomon Kane, Reichbusters Project Vril, Enchanters, or Hell the Last Saga, but let's get to everything else. For Joan of Arc this week, we would like to first thank you for your patience and for sending us all that feedback for your Joan of Arc pledges. Now, we kindly request that you don't send any more messages with regards to issues you've identified with your pledges until the end of the month, as our system is currently overloaded and our customer service team is processing all your requests as they come in. We will be taking note of everything that has been sent to us for the feedback that we give you. The reason we're asking that you don't send us any more issues, and only for a limited time, is because we need some time to properly prepare the answers, FAQ, and errata for you, which will hopefully help you solve most of the issues at hand. From the new year on, when we will have shared everything with you and when you cross-check the issues with your personal versions, you'll be able to identify with ease what is a general issue and what is a personal one. This does not mean that we will not be here with after-sales support. Quite the contrary. Our hubs will be sending replacements as normal and we will inform you on the dates that this will be available. What we're simply trying to do is decongest our system a bit, as we have basically identified what are the general problems that need to be addressed. Again, thank you for your understanding on this matter. Now, let's get started with some identified issues and solutions for you. Number one, bases are missing from the Teutonic expansion box. This is a mistake from our side, and we will make sure to send you enough bases to cover the minis of the Teutonic box. Teutonic Knights expansion stretch goals will not be covered though as they weren't for the rest of the campaign. In 2022 we will make available on our eShop two and three slot bases for 15 millimeter miniatures so you will be able to cover your needs for your 15 millimeter miniature games at an affordable price. Number two, the sleeves pack for the Teutonic Knights expansion is missing five tarot-sized sleeves. We apologize for this inconvenience. We currently have our new sleeves line under development, and in January it will be made available for pre-order. Now, we'll make sure that those of you who have backed for this sleeves pack will get an extra credit on our eShop to benefit from a premium price. Third, the plunder banners are missing a sticker sheet. And we'll make sure that those of you who have backed this get the extra sticker sheet so you can finish off your banners. Fourth, the Legend Mini Poker Cards in the Upgrade Pack and Teutonic Expansion are 1.2 millimeters bigger than those included in the core box, which makes them distinguishable when you shuffle them together. And we'll make sure we send the correct replacement so that there are no size discrepancies in the deck. Fifth, in the core box, the Hanged Wolf's Cross scenario has a token which is printed upside down and it can be spotted immediately. And we'll make sure that we send replacement tokens for this. Sixth, you can find a list of what should be included in the upgrade pack in the description of this video. We understand that some of the cards mentioned in this document are not in the upgrade pack, so we will make sure to send replacements for those. Seventh, the Devil Solo scenario will be available for download as a PDF by the end of January. Eighth, the updated battle mode, including all new units from the Teutonic Knights box, will be available for download as a PDF by the end of February. 
we've also promised you that we will work on an FAQ and a RATA document. As we've been working very hard to identify the issues and since we have promised to give you answers as soon as possible, what we've decided to opt for sharing with you is a simple PDF file with all the information you need, but it's not properly laid out and pretty. Still, it includes all the information and errata to start playing the game as it has two sections, one for the English version and one for the French. And it is a living document that will be updated. We've already started to work on laying out the files for you, and we will have them ready by mid-January. This simple PDF, however, will get you everything you need to play during the holiday season. Now, with regards to the RPG, we still have no update on the matter. As the situation stands, we are in discussion with the publisher, who will produce it for us, who has met with Pascal Bernard about his demands and concerns. We are waiting feedback from them on what those are, so we can define how much they affect our planning process. As this is not something that we can control, we are waiting for instructions from the other side so we can evaluate the situation. We will keep you posted as soon as we have some more news to share, though. Now, we understand that Time of Legends Joan of Arc has been a project with enormous ups and quite a few downs, along with even more challenges. It's been our first project as a solo publisher, and it's a product that we hold dear and that we will continue to support until what we deliver is to the standard that it deserves to be. It is a project that we had plans for, and we're hoping to be one of our cradles in our publishing endeavors. Therefore, it's with great disappointment that we must announce that Time of Legends Joan of Arc is no longer a license owned by Mythic Games. The rights to the license have been reverted to the author, Pascal Bernard. This is the outcome of the litigation process, and it is what we had to agree on so that we didn't compromise the project delivery to you. Our promise to our backers and supporters is more significant than the games we produce, as we wouldn't be here making more games without you. Pascal Bernard now holds the rights to the game mechanics, and we gave him permission to use art and miniatures, which means that the future of Time of Legends Joan of Arc lies with him. This Kickstarter and the Pledge Manager were the last chances you had to get the game as a published copy from Mythic Games, and we will not have any copies available on our eShop or during conventions after fulfillment is completed. We want to thank each of you for all your support, for sticking with us through these challenging times. Once again, without you, we wouldn't be the publisher that we are today. And we once again want to clarify that even though the license rights are no longer ours, we will offer after-sales service for the game until it is delivered fully and correctly, and then we'll move into an exciting new future together. Indeed, even though the future of this specific license is not with us anymore, all is not lost. We are still the owners of the art and the miniatures that have been produced, so there is a future for those elements in another game. Maybe even more than one game. What and when exactly, we can't reveal yet. But known characters from the Hundred Years' War, as well as the many beloved fantasy characters, will make their appearance again. For Super Fantasy Brawl Round 2 this week, we know that news has been a long time coming. The last information we have from our shipping liaison in China is that they're getting it ready to ship. So the only information we have right now is that it will be shipping from China soon. I do know that the people at Board Game Spotlight have received their all-in copy that we sent them for content creation, and Derek has taken a few pictures of it, which you can see here. Overall, it looks like an amazing draw, so if I were you, I'd go stake out their Facebook group and YouTube channel to see what they produce with it. For Darkest Dungeon today, just a brief update on our Pledge Manager. The Pledge Manager will close sometime in February, so please make sure you get in there and finalize your pledge by then. 
As I mentioned in the general news section, JT and I have recorded the entire Level 3 journey through the dungeons, during which we faced the Prophet. I'll have those edited and posted by Friday and Saturday this weekend. Additionally, this will be the final update for Darkest Dungeon in 2021. The next update will come on Tuesday, January 4th, 2022. For Six Siege this week, we'd like to share our final article about gameplay, which focuses on how we translated an operator to the board game and how we endeavored to keep it consistent with other operators and the rule set. First, to develop operators, we often had a very strong foundation provided by the designer of the game. Sometimes, simple tuning of that foundation allowed us to translate the special gadget of an operator and their firepower. For example, Montaigne and Thatcher have mostly stayed the same throughout development. In other cases, we had to change a gadget's ability multiple times to avoid making the operator overpowered or too obvious a pick. Rook and Jaeger were such cases and have seen multiple iterations. Then, with operators from the expansions, we had more challenging designs to tackle. How could we translate the spirit of operators that do not have a gadget, but rather special abilities like Oryx or Caviera. Jackal's gadget was also very tricky to import from video game to board game with the constraints of our own medium. The rule set has also changed, and as it morphed, we started to use certain tools and specific wording like keywords. The development and balancing of all 60 operators took place over many months, as we sought to turn the team composition part of the game into a true dilemma. The help and feedback of numerous testers, proofreaders, fans, and backers allowed us to create a balanced rule set. All of this to simply ensure a faithful adaptation that would allow each board game operator to feel like its video game counterpart, and that would allow synergies and counterpoints. Now, concerning an update on the game, almost all of the rule files, like rule booklets, mission booklets, profiles, and so on, and the annexes, like player aids and a full list of operators, and so on, and the app have been finalized in our master language of French. This means the last comments of the many proofreaders have been dealt with and implemented and checked by the proofreader in chief and head of localization, and they are now in the hands of the translators. The files are laid out and sublimated by our graphic designers, too. At the end of the week, they will have finished the layout of the map pack and operator expansion booklets. Then their work will be over. Now, about miniatures, like the operators, the gadgets, and the furniture, and so on, our production manager has started the back and forth with the factory to create the 3D molds and the precise count of each game element. We noticed some of you wanted to have more info on the big storage box and the plastic tokens that are on GameFound. For us, unfortunately, it's a bit too early to show you pictures of the plastic inserts as their design is one of the last things we design. As for the tokens that are converted into plastic, we don't have a physical render yet, but we're convinced that they will be very sturdy and appropriately thick, and this will certainly enhance the longevity of the components. Rest assured that as soon as we are able, we will share them with you. We're looking forward to showing you the final version of the game and to share the updated rulebook and mission booklet files with you in French and English, as well as the operator profiles. We should be able to make those publicly available at the start of the next year. Thank you for your interest and vocal support. If you have any questions, our teams are ready to answer them. Marco, Chaz, and I are often lurking around the Kickstarter comments, and Mark and JB, the developers are rather prolific on the BGG forum, too. For Monster Apocalypse today, we wanted to announce that the Pledge Manager is incoming. The Monster Apocalypse Pledge Manager hits GameFound tomorrow. Get ready, Monster Heads, to check out what's new. Fill out your Pledge Manager account and enter your shipping address one step closer to that monstrous set of boxes full of teeth, claws, guns, lasers, and toxic mania being delivered. 
Be sure to check out all the new add-ons, including the dual faction unit boxes and some awesome monster-sized neoprene. But you'll have to wait for the launch to see the complete selection. It rocks. Under the new add-ons section, you'll find all the new additions from the Pledge Manager. So some of those will include unofficial names. Be aware of that. A quick note to our Kickstarter backers, please wait until you receive the invitation email before logging into your GameFound account. The invitation email will go to the email address that you used to back the Kickstarter campaign. So make sure you check all those spam folders and have a blast when you log in. Now remember that Leo will be live tomorrow at 6 p.m. GMT, 1 p.m. Eastern Time on our YouTube channel with a live Q&A in English and at 8.30 p.m. Paris time with a live Q&A in French. So tune in if you have any questions, or if you just want to see what wonders he might be able to show. As mentioned earlier, I'll be back to normal this week for my videos, so be on the lookout for those on Thursday and Friday. But that's it for today. Stay safe, play some games while you're at it, and we'll see you guys and gals on the flip side. Take care. <laughs>